Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier here. Welcome back to another episode of D&D Stories on Riptovia. Today we've got How the Dice Gods Punished Me for My Hubris. <laughs> For the last few months, my group's DM was planning a Christmas session. Oh, how cute. I decided to play a wizard. I hadn't played a wizard since I first played D&D with the same DM. The wizard I had played in my first D&D session died to a gelatinous cube because I was a level 1 wizard with thunderclap, and I'd been separated from the rest of the party. My character became a reoccurring gag in our group. Every time we went into a dungeon, we would end up finding his remains somewhere. So, for the Christmas session, I decided to get some redemption for my first character. I told the other players in the group about how I was planning to get some strong spells. I was overconfident about my character being able to get through the one-shot easily. The session starts, and we are in an ice cave with corpses frozen into the snow in the entrance. The party was hired by the local village to kill a dragon that has been scaring the children of the village. The dragon was laying on its pile of gold. We all prepare for combat. My wizard casts Tasha's otherworldly guise on himself, and the bard casts an illusion of other people to distract the dragon. The dragon easily sees through the illusions, however, and combat starts. I roll a four for initiative, so mm, I go last. After everyone takes their turns, my wizard flies up and takes out his maul to hit the dragon. I roll a nat one and my character immediately flies into the mouth of the dragon, which bites down on him. I use my second attack, <laughs> another nat one. The dragon bites him again. I use my bonus action to misty step out of the teeth of the dragon. On the dragon's turn, it hits my wizard out of the air. I roll another nat one for the save to land safely, so my wizard hits the ground taking enough damage to bring him to half health and losing concentration on Tasha's otherworldly guise. On my next turn, I cast Vampiric Touch at 7th level through my Owl Familiar to regain some health as my wizard hides in the corner of the cave. After a few rounds, the dragon sees my wizard and comes over to attack. Nat 20. This dragon beats the ever-loving shit out of my wizard, nearly killing him. My wizard Misty steps back over to the cave entrance, and I repeat the Vampiric Touch trick to regain some health. On the dragon's last turn, it uses Breath Weapon on not only me and another party member, but the owl that was flying 10 feet in the air above it by, in the words of my DM, flicking its head back, and saying that it was part of the rule of cool. While we were celebrating with the villagers after defeating the dragon, we saw Santa's sleigh fly cross the sky, coming to the village to deliver gifts to the children of the village. The villagers watched in horror as Santa was shot out of the sky. My wizard was the first to run over to Santa's sleigh to see 20 guards, a mage, and a general riding a baby Tarask. I see that they are putting the sack into a cage, so my wizard tries to misty step into the cage stealthily. Nat one. Everybody sees me in the cage. Guards who weren't even looking at the cage see me in the cage. So I decide to jump into the sack for safety, intending to try to cast Arcane Gate from inside to escape with all the presents. But it turns out that the sack was empty, and like a bag of holding was bigger on the inside. So much bigger in fact, that when I fell to the bottom I lost a quarter of my health. The guards then yank me up out of the bag and asked who I was. Eventually, after enough illusions from the bard who was seeing all of this from a distance, all the guards and the mage leave, but the general riding the baby Tarask stays, with the baby Tarask standing over me. The DM gives us a surprise round, since the general hadn't seen the rest of the party. I cast Misty Step to escape the general and the Tarask. On my turn, I cast Disguise Self to appear as the general and run towards the general yelling, GET OFF MY Tarask! I managed to knock him off the Tarask and we started to fight. The Tarask got confused on who was the general and the DM asked me to roll for deception. I rolled an 18. The general, however, got a 19 persuasion. The general got back on the Tarask, which then roasted my wizard alive. After the rogue redirected a hit from the Tarask to the general, which killed him, the Tarask ran off in guilt. I'm pretty sure the real reason it didn't stay was because the DM just didn't want us having a baby Tarask. I got one nat 20 in the entire session. 
to check for traps in a cobalt cave. There weren't any traps, but there was a machine I had already seen that was being used as a mechanical monster to terrorize a different village. So basically the most useless nat 20 ever. When the dice gods have your back, go for broke. Minor-ish spoiler-ishness for Lost Minds, just an FYI. So this happened yesterday, I have an in-person game I play every other Tuesday. Well, before the game got started, I got out my dice and rolled my various d20s to see which set was going to roll good for me that day. First one I picked up was my red translucent gold flake set, then I call my Delkesh set in honor of my first character who was a fire wizard. Roll nat 20. I laughed a bit, and one of the players said, well that was your good roll for the night. Oh, he was wrong. He was very wrong. I decided I was going to alternate between my Delkesh set and my Lyra set, blue and purple swirl, the colors of my warlock I was playing that session, for the evening. So I pulled out both sets and waited for the session to start. Session starts. We're in Kragma Hideout, where we had just finished killing a bunch of goblins the previous session. We hadn't yet made our way out because we were pretty beat up, and we knew there were more goblins still to deal with on the other side of the hideout. We short rest and then make our way over a bridge to the other side. We spot a couple of goblins passing under the bridge. We'd all picked up bows from the dead goblins and I suggested we shoot the goblins from the bridge when they passed by. We ended up shooting one on either side of the bridge. Well, I didn't shoot, I fired off an Eldritch Blast. Nat 20, 17 damage. Poor goblin got red misted before he knew what happened. It was only the beginning. Next up, we find a couple other goblins and a wolf. We beat on them a bit, we're pretty much walking through this part. Then a bugbear with three wolves comes around behind us. Uh-oh, this could be bad. It's my turn. I turn to the bugbear with my wand held high, glowing blue, with a held eldritch blast, my warlock flavors everything in ice colors, and shout, we can talk this out or you can die. Your choice. Everyone at the table looks at me like I'm nuts. I'm looking at me like I'm nuts. I don't even know what I'm doing at this point. I roll intimidation. Nat 20. 26 total. My intimidation, deception, and persuasion pluses are all plus 6. Her backstory is that she was a noblewoman, so she's very good at charisma-based things. She escaped the extermination of her noble house and is bent on getting her lands and title back once we finish Lost Mines and continue the campaign past that arc. What, what do you want to talk about? We don't have to fight, you know. Let my friends and I go, we'll leave you alone. After all, it's my friends against you, your four wolves, and one half-dead goblin. You're outnumbered. Keep in mind, at the time, it was me, three party members, and an NPC prisoner we were saving from the mine. By numbers alone, they outnumbered us almost two to one, but I was betting on bugbears not being math geniuses. Oh, uh, I have friends. So do I. But do we really want this to come to that? Roll insight to see if he really does have friends coming. Nat 19 plus 4 for 23 and can tell that while this bugbear may have allies, they're probably not all that close by. Then I roll for intimidation again. Nat 20. Oh, okay, we let you go, but we keep prisoner. Oh, come now. Do you really want to do that? After all, he's just a pathetic whelp who will do you no good, and you'll have to keep feeding. Let us take him off your hands. Then there's more food for all of you. Roll for persuasion, another nat 20. At this point, I'm kind of freaking out. I've never rolled this well at any point in my D&D playing career. It's nuts. Okay, fine. Take him and leave. We leave the caves. We didn't get all the loot we could have gotten, but we did get the NPC we were supposed to save. On the way back to town, I extend my arm out for my familiar. I don't have a true familiar yet, but there's this black cat that follows me around because it's the chosen form of my archfey patron, who for some reason loves to hang out with me, and motion for her to climb up on my shoulder. DM has me roll for persuasion. Nat 20 again. In five consecutive rolls, I rolled 20, 19, and then three 20s. 
The 19 and the last 20 were on my Lyra die. The other three 20s were on the Delkish die. I didn't roll another friggin' thing for the rest of the night. I wasn't gonna chance it. TLDR. My lawful evil warlock rolls a string of nat 20s to convince a bugbear to leave us with their prisoner and convince an arch fake in cat form to perch on her shoulder. Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier checking in after the vid, and make sure to leave a like and to subscribe as well as to ring that bell so you can get notified whenever we make a new post. For more D&D story action, please head on over to our main channel, r slash Mr. Ripper, and for a little bit of fun, come on over to my YouTube and Twitch channels, Brian Von Vier, where I do a lot of cool stuff too. All the love everybody, and we will see you next time. Bye for now, and please be safe out there.